Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Positive Pessimist Podcast. It's Wrestling Wednesday. My guest today is John Myers. John Myers is a four-time state champ from Connecticut. He's also wrestled for the University of Minnesota under Jay Robinson. He's the head coach at Poway High School in Poway, California. He is also going to be uh, in the Flow film coming up with Stephen Neal. Stephen Neal is a world champion wrestler. He is also a Super Bowl champion for the Patriots. We met a few years ago at the uh, U.S. Open. Great dude. We got along really well, and I'm looking forward to talking to him, so let's bring him in. What's going on, man? Great to see you. Great to see you. I saw the uh, trailer for the Flow film. It looks awesome. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, it's amazing, and just the, the, the story that will come out, just really how we kept everything going, and, and with the help of our community, and, and, uh, and Stephen Neal is, is, is incredible, you'll, you'll love the story, and, uh, it just, you know, it just goes to show you what you can do if you, if you really, really want something done, um, you'll, you'll find the resources, and, and, uh, you'll get it done. How do you know Stephen? Um, Stephen's from San Diego. Okay. He lives in Poway. Uh, his son is in our program. So his son is a freshman on our freshman wrestling team. He, and he's a, he's a wrestling fan. He loves wrestling. So he wants to be around it all the time. So, um, yeah, he's, <laughs> it's pretty amazing to have that resource right down the road from you. Yeah. How does your team look this year? We're looking pretty tough. Um, we have uh, probably uh, we've, we've got a really good team. We've got a really good team. Uh, we're, we're solid from I'd say 108 through 160, 170, um, and then we've got some tough kids up top as well. So um, we have we have seven seven All Americans out at Fargo. Um, wow! So. Most of those kids are back. I think six of them we have on the team now. Um, been training hard, you know, the whole summer, and, and uh, yeah, we'll see. What what would you what would you point to for being the reason you guys are able to be so consistently good every single year? Because Poway's been good for a long time. Yeah, I, I wish there was some kind of a you know a magic pill or something like that but it's 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 honestly it's it's hard freaking work um <laughs> i'm here i'm literally here at the at, at the school uh 7 days a week um i have six or seven coaches that are amazing that do the same thing um you know i was just sitting down with my freshman coach where we we before the pandemic we had 97 kids total on our high school team and you know they don't just show up so it's it's he's getting ready for his for his freshman meeting and it's you know talking to the football coaches he's a PE teacher so we're constantly you know I'm going down to the PE classes and uh during my free periods and I'm saying that kid right there you know I'll watch these kids do tumbling or soccer and go talk to that kid you know he looks like a 220 pounder and we had probably three before the pandemic 30 or 35 freshman football players who had never wrestled before and uh and and you know wrestling is a sport where there, there's not a lot of access to it for kids like there is football basketball soccer so you have to go and you have to make them want to try it first yeah um so that's 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 work and then all the way down to the you know the the, the kids who are in third fourth fifth sixth grade um and it's constantly trying to improve things on a yearly basis, you know, we get to the end of the year and we're like, okay, what, what can we do better, um, to make this program more solid? And, uh, we hired a new coach, one of my, um, best friends from out East. I've been trying to get him out here for 10 to 12 years. And, um, he finally decided to move out and he's probably one of the top kids club coaches in the country. And we hired him full time, uh, to come out here. And so that was another piece of the puzzle that we've been trying to figure out. It's just, Constantly trying to tweak it and make things better. Um, it's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot of. Uh, I mean, during that pandemic, <laughs> I was waking up in the middle of the night sometimes. You know, just I don't, you know, what if they do this? What if they stop us from doing this? And it was. I told people it's it's not just plan A and B. I was like trying to come up with plan A, B, C, and D. So if A and B got shut down, we're on to C and D. We. We switched facilities three or four different times, and 
um, during that pandemic and just making sure that these kids have a place no matter what happens to train. So it's, 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 it's stressful, hard work for sure. Yeah. Plus you guys have great uh, community support, right? Like the parents are really into it and everything. We do. We do. Our, our parents are, are fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, even, even on that line, I think we do a good job from, you know, all of our coaches and, and our, our board, our foundation board of keeping them involved, uh, trying to keep the communication, um, going with those parents. I just had a meeting, you know, once a week, I meet with the, one of the heads of our foundation and our kids club coach. They were just down in my office after we have a PE class that we have practice in. And right after that, I met with them and just going over, you know, how can we communicate to these parents better about what's going in in practice since right now they're not allowed in practice because of the COVID. So um, constantly trying to keep them involved so they feel important and they feel like they're part of the program. Doing, um, you know, we do beach outings and try to get the team as a whole um, to do fun outings together. Um, so, yeah, we're very fortunate. We're very fortunate to be here in Poway. And our administrators, they, they back us 100% and they love what we're doing. And, and they're telling us constantly, you know, you guys are doing a great job. Keep up the good work. How can we help you? Um, so that helps as well. But I think that comes from, you know, if we weren't doing good things, we probably wouldn't have that support. Um, so it's kind of, it, it, it's a circle, you know, you have to do the hard work and make sure number one, that the kids are getting it done in the classroom. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, all the, the teachers here, they know, and the administrators, they know that when I'm walking the halls in between classes or whenever, um, if they have somebody in their class who's a wrestler, they're supposed to stop me. I tell them that, please stop me. Let me know if, if, you know, these kids are doing well, if they're not doing well, um, I can fix it. If they're not doing well, if they're doing well, I want to be able to, I always announce it to our team and say, Hey, you know, um, teacher talked to me today about Johnny. So he's doing awesome. He brought his grades up to an A. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm constantly letting those teachers know that we want to be that, uh, beacon on campus for behavior, academics, um, socially as well. And if that's taken care of like it is, then I think, you know, the administrator, the administrators want to back you and they want to help you. Yeah. Um, have you been able to keep that CIF uh, streak going? That the, the last coach, Wayne, what did he win, 35 in a row? Yeah, it's funny. I always have to ask because, you know, he used to always have hats that, that had the thing in the back that had all the – so now we do that kind of on T-shirts now, and, and I, I – I have a terrible memory, so we're always asking, like, how many is that now? And he, he knows exactly. You know, I'll call him up. How many is that? 41? Okay. Yeah, it's um, – we did. We, we had a CIF Division II tournament last year. Um, that was the, the – we didn't have a state tournament, and that was in the spring. And, uh, yeah, we ended up winning that. We did not have a Masters tournament, which is all of San Diego. Um, but, uh, yeah, we ended up winning that, although our training was a little bit different from everybody else. I, I went from January on, probably December on, we went all freestyle and Greco. During the high school season, uh, we weren't even training folk style. We were training right through that. Um, kind of, that was kind of my, one of my plans was thinking, you know, they're probably not going to have a state tournament. So let's get ready for the world team trials, um, Fargo, all those things. So we kind of got a jump on a lot of people because of the pandemic, um, I think. And, and that's one of the things I told my kids and parents. I said, when this thing came down, I said, we're going to turn this into a positive. We're going to get better. Academically, we're going to get better. Wrestling-wise, we're going to get better. And socially, we're going to get better because of this pandemic. And wrestling-wise, I think that we jumped, you know, some of those states like um, Pennsylvania, you know, I, I know they had a state tournament. So they wrestled folk style all the way up until World Team Trials we were able to go from January all the way up until, you know, July, all freestyle and Greco. I was taking a chance because at any time they could have said, you know, hey, you're going to have a, we're having a state tournament. I just kind of took the chance that, you know what, um, we're probably not. So, um, yeah. So the answer is yes, the CIF, it's, it's intact. <laughs> and explain to people who don't know, the CIF is your half of the state? So CIF, uh, the, the, the state is, is broken up into, I think it's 10 different sections or, yeah, sections. And, uh, we are in San Diego section, that bottom section. And, um, 
Uh, in order to qualify for the state championships, you go through some, some sections go through league first. You have to place that. We just go CIF. So San Diego is broken up into four, uh, sections. So division one, two, three, and four by size. And there's about 16 teams in each of those divisions. One, two, three, and four. We were in division two this year. So we were against 16 to 20 teams. And then the top, it's different for different divisions. About the top six or about the top six from those go on to Masters, which is all of San Diego. All those uh, four divisions come together. And then the top, it's different every year, but three to four from San Diego okay. go to state. Now, like the central section and southern section, those guys are so tough, they get like 10 kids for weight class to go to the state tournament. Us down here, we get three or four. Okay. Yeah, it's you know it's 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 not in every state. It's not a big deal necessarily to make it to the state tournament. But California is one of those states where making it to the state tournament is a big deal. You know, can't, like in Kansas where I grew up, making it to the state tournament. You know, congratulations, but it's not that big a deal. Um, yeah, yeah, and it, and in fact, uh, yeah, I'm from Connecticut, and there was no qualifier. There's no qualifier for Connecticut, so you go to the class state championship, you don't even qualify for it. Now, they have a state open after that, and then they have a, uh, a New England championship after that. But here, I mean, they have to go, they're going league, a lot, most of them, league, CIF, Masters, then state. And then you have, it's the, whole, the entire state of California. Yeah. And, and obviously, California is a huge state, and wrestling participation in California is huge. So, yeah, I, I can't tell you the amount of times kids have, have been left off that, that either didn't make it um, or or didn't place at state, the top eight. Um, you know, we, we had one year, we always, I, I, I have a couple stories. You know, I had a kid that I went to college with where I was just talking to Branstetter about it. And, and when I was at Min University of Minnesota, he, w he was telling us a story about how he was undefeated. He was 55-0 and 0, and he was ranked number one in state. And got the state, and they had formulas back there, back then, and they put him in this this quarter bracket, and uh, it was a carry at that time, like the NCAs used to be. So he he got upset in the first round, and then that kid lost the next match. So the number one kid was out. Wow. And uh, I remember when I came to Poway, you know, like five years later after Minnesota, because uh, we we thought he was, you know, we were like, you're B, you're BS, and us, you weren't that good. And Brinster's <laughs> telling me the story about. And he didn't use the kid's name. And I said, wait, is this his name? He said, yeah. So he tells that story all the time about the way it was because he had a guy in that, that was in that quarter bracket. And uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit better now, but still, it's, uh, it, that, that funnel just, it just is, is so small compared to the amount of kids that wrestle. It's an incredible state tournament. It, it really, I don't know if you've ever been to it. or you, Did you go when? We went five you, years ago, yeah. We went, uh, yeah, it was awesome. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, and, you know, the issue is people don't know how, how, how tough of a sport, how great of a sport this is. And, and I always give tickets to our administrators. I always want my principal, my athletic director there at least. And, and when new principals come to it, um, nine times out of ten, they are blown away. And, and they're asking questions like, wait, that guy just had a match. He has to go wrestle again in, in 45 minutes? Huh? And for three days they have to do that? Yeah, like they are blown away. It's like it's like nothing they've ever seen. For us, it's kind of like yeah, it's pretty tough, you know, big state. It's a but and you've been through kids wrestling, you know, you have these big tournaments and things. But for an administrator or somebody that's outside of wrestling to see something like that, to yeah. watch a kid give everything they have at that high level, and it's not over. The game's not over. You know, it's it's he's coming back in forty five minutes to wrestle again, yeah, and again and again, and then on top of it, they they don't understand. He's got to make weight too. That guy has to make weight on top of all this. So yeah, it's real. You know that that's one of the biggest things is is we need to spread that knowledge to people um, and, and give access to, to to people who don't understand the sport and, and, and create fans that are outside of our sport. I, I feel like our sport has so many. Our fans are all made up of past wrestlers, uh, past parents of wrestlers. Um, we need to figure out ways. To bring other people into the sport because like I said even you know when somebody watches wrestling um nine times out of ten they're hooked you know like that was amazing I never knew it was like that yeah 
And little things, we try to do things, you know, you'll see hopefully in, in that, I haven't seen the full video that was on flow, but um, we, we, we try to do community service as much as, as possible and talk to people through through community service that would never have, have, have watched us. And uh, so for that, you know, that facility that we built on, on Stephen Neal's property, um, we went around to thank the people in his neighborhood. It's, it's a residential neighborhood on a cul-de-sac and people are like, what? It looks like a circus <laughs> tent, this thing. Yeah. And it's lit up at night and there's cars coming in. And so people are like, what the heck? So we ended up doing community service a couple of times and we spent the day helping people out with yard work and whatever they wanted. My whole team, we went out there and we helped them. And at the same time, uh, the kids got to talk to these, these, uh, people who don't even have kids, a lot of them. And say, well, we wrestle. What, what's that like, you know? And, and and start to kind of bridge that gap and and get our community even more involved in, in, in the great things that we have going on. Wow, that's really awesome, man! Not only are you making great wrestlers, but you're making great people that uh, filter out throughout the country and and in that. That's community. the goal. Yeah, that's that's the goal because we always say, you know, we don't make you know like a lot of wrestling teams, we don't make cuts. And 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 I tell people, we had 97 kids on our high school team. There's 14 spots. You know, we have a, we have a varsity A, we have a varsity B, so there's 28 spots. We have a JV team and a freshman team. That's a lot of kids left over that are not, you know, they're still getting matches, but those are the kids that we need to go off and tell people in the future when they're, you know, 30, 40 years old, hey, I wrestled in high school. I wrestled for Powell. It was a great thing. Yeah. And, and, and become fans of the sport and tell other people what a, what a great sport it is. Um, so it's constantly trying to think of things like that. How can we get more people involved in our sport? Yeah. Um, how can we get them access? And uh, we're actually a little a little secret that we're doing. Um, I haven't told anybody about this, but uh, trying to think about how we get some of these other athletes out for for wrestling because now a lot of kids are um, specialized, right? They do one sport the entire year, and they have you know a football kid might have in the winter they have a a quarterback coach, you know, that they're working with. So they can't wrestle. They can't do these other sports. Well, um, I'm starting up in the winter. Uh, we are going to hit the uh, Pop Warner uh, football club in Poway uh, in October. We're gonna t- well, I already talked to the head of it, the president of it. We're going to talk to all the parents, and Stephen Neal is going to be with us. Stephen Neal is going to run in our small wrestling room. He's going to run wrestling slash football practices so he's going to run uh tackling drills and uh kickoff drills and how to tackle the correct way while he's teaching them a double leg yeah so now we've gotten them in the wrestling room now they know what the wrestling room was like and uh we've gained a little bit of access for those kids into wrestling so now those kids feel comfortable hey i've wrestled i did that last fall last winter so now the next year we, we hook them a little bit and just always trying to do things like that to get kids involved um, where we might miss those kids. Yeah. You know? And where, whereas soccer and baseball and it's everywhere for those kids, it's everywhere, especially in Southern California. You have, you know, any time of the year you can play baseball. So it's really difficult, but if you work at it and you're constantly trying to come up with ideas um, and you throw something at the wall, see if it, see if it works. So we're going to try that this, this winter. And then, uh, because a lot of times it's, it's it's tough getting a kid in ninth grade nowadays in wrestling because, uh, you know, kids are wrestling at a younger age at a higher level now nowadays. And, and to, to kind of even the, the playing field with them, we have to try to get those kids in, in at least fifth or sixth grade now, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always shocked when I hear about somebody that started as a freshman because I and and then they do well, and I'm like, man, you're a you're a freak athlete to be able to do well right off out of the gate because wrestling is a sport that that really helps to start a little bit earlier. Are you still able to wrestle with the guys? Oh man, I got out there. I got out there. I think last week with it, you know the years. I tell people as it as it as I get older, the weight classes go lower and lower that I'm allowed to <laughs> wrestle with. So you know. 10, 15 years ago, I was wrestling with the heavyweights, the two twenty pounders, and and now I'm like, I'm like, is that kid, is he cutting for one hundred and eight? I don't know if I can go with that guy. You know, I better make sure he's 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 at one hundred and eight. Yeah. yeah, I'll grab a kid once in a while, but um, yeah, it's it's tough for me to move now. I, I I've never had really too too bad of injuries. I've never had any surgeries or anything like that. 
but my knees are, are starting to bother me a lot. Um, I work out every day. Uh, I do about 60 to 90 minutes of cardio on the Aerodyne and, and uh, uh, on the rowing machines that we have. I, I do that religiously. Um, but, uh, yeah, the wrestling's tough for me, and, and, and uh, it, it, it takes everything to just kind of show moves uh, to the kids. But So I can't imagine trying to grab one of these kids. And on top of it, we got some kids that, that – that, they're not going to be nice to me. They're, they're probably trying to take my head off. You know? <laughs> so yeah. I have to be careful with that, who I go with. How old were you when you started wrestling? I was five. Okay. I, was, I mean, I was in, my father was a coach and a uh, kids club coach. And so I was really in the room at like three years old. I was running around in there. And then five years old, I had my, my, my first tournament actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really hoping that my boy wants to wrestle. Right now, he's really into me uh, body slamming him on the bed and all that stuff, and uh, you know, just trying to make it make it make it fun, make it fun, and, and make make it part of his life. You know, make it constant. You know, like hey, that what I just did to you that was that was a double leg. You know, and 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 who do, watch you know watch flow with him. This is Jordan Bar- Burroughs. He has the best double leg in the world. So you, that's what I just showed you. You know, okay, make it constant with him. Yeah, okay. Um, you were awesome. you were a four time state champ in Connecticut, um, and then you ended up wrestling for the University of Minnesota. Uh, what was that like? Uh, Minnesota was interesting. So I came from a small state, was four time class state champion there, uh, and 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 it was a small state. So I, I'd say I was kind of you know the, the the big fish in a small pond. I went outside and I wrestled every year in our. Uh, you know, what was Fargo then? It was in northern Iowa. Iowa. I wrestled every year there. I did all the freestyle in Greco. Um, I wrestled in South America and the, and the Pan Ams in, in, in high school. Um, but it was a new experience going to the University of Minnesota. Um, and it was tough. It, 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 it was very tough. You know, um, being in a room when I wasn't the best, uh, where I had to struggle all the time. Um, and not to say that I didn't work hard, but it, it kind of, um, mentally it messed with me a little bit. The fact that I can remember thinking to myself, I am working as hard as I possibly can right now. And I'm not getting the results to beat certain guys. Um, and, and that, that really messed with me, uh, there, the experience as a whole, it was wonderful. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it uh, for, for anything. Uh, the experience that I that I received working with some of the greatest coaches in the world um, and be around being around great great wrestlers was amazing. Um, but I definitely didn't reach the goals that I wanted to um, collegiately. And you know, maybe it's a maybe it's a, a, a way out for me, but I, I have to think in the back of my mind, maybe if I did reach those goals, maybe I wouldn't be where I am right now doing the things that I am. Uh, if I hadn't have struggled so much and, and hadn't have uh, reached my goals, would I be would I really be teaching high school and coaching kids wrestling and coaching high school wrestling the way that I am with the passion that I am? I I, I don't know, you know, so uh, I try to be grateful for those experiences that I that I had there, and uh, and and try to try to learn from them. But but it's on my mind constantly, you know. Just like you know the guys that you you know, I, I, they're not, I, I'd have to imagine there's not many guys who who leave the sport, the collegiate sport, and say I'm satisfied. You know, they're they're, they're it's probably minimal because even you know I think about it, even those guys that took second in the NCAs. Those guys are saying, like, I didn't win it. You yeah. Know? Um, my roommate was ranked second in the country his senior year, uh, placed as – was an All-America his junior year, and to this day, every day, he thinks about it. You know, he, he was in one of those carry tournaments, and he lost first round, and the guy didn't carry him. And he, he thinks about it every day, he told me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, great experience at Minnesota, great coaches. Jay Robinson was fun to be around. Learned a lot from him. Um, you know, as a kid, 18 years old, listening to the wisdom that he had, I probably didn't listen and the, the way that I should have. And now I hear myself, you know, as I was coaching, even at a younger age, I hear myself thinking 
things and, 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 uh, like, I should have listened to Jay. You say the same exact thing, you know? <laughs> what an idiot. You know, so, um, yeah, yeah. yeah it was fun. It, it kind of stinks as you get older, you realize things and then your body won't cooperate and you're like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that brings up another thing. You know, I talk to my kids all the time about regret, right? And I tell them that you don't understand it now because, because kids, they, they live in the present. They live for now. I'm te- you know, I tell them as adults, as parents, we have regrets. Everybody has regrets and things that they could have done a little bit better, been more efficient. And, and I try to talk to them about let's let's keep those regrets to a, to a, to a minimum, um, and and try to think about the future where you're going to be in ten years. Um, and that that is very difficult for kids to to look beyond right now. You know what feels good to them right now. Um, and, and especially to think about being an old guy, being 40, 50 years old, that's very difficult for them. And to think about, like, I want to be able to, I want to be 40, 50 years old, and I want to be able to say, I'm satisfied. You know, I did everything that I could have done, and, and, I, and I feel good about that, yeah. you know, about everything in your life. So that's, that's a big lesson for kids, for sure. Yeah, it's rare to come across a wrestler that's satisfied with, with what they did. You know, they always think they could have done more. And, and uh, you know, very few people, you know, like I wanted to be a state champion and I did. And I still look back on it and like, why did you beat so-and-so by three points? You should have been pinning exactly. those guys. You know, uh, yeah. that, that kind of thing. Um, who was on your team at, at Minnesota that, you, that people would recognize? Who were some of the studs? Uh, Dave Zuniga was there. He, he beat, uh, he beat one of the brands brothers in the big tens. He was second in the NCAAs. Uh, he was 134. We had a kid, uh, by the name of Keith Nix, who a lot of people don't know. He's from Oklahoma. He was, uh, he was as a true freshman, he was second in the NCAAs, this kid. And he lost to, uh, I can't remember his name, lost to the Pennsylvania kid who, um, Stroud, East Stroudsburg kid who was, who was a two-time NCAA champ, lost Jack, him in the finals. Was it Jack Kuvo? And, uh, he, he ended up getting Kuvo. He lost to Jack Kuvo. Okay. And he ended up getting hurt after that um, and uh, didn't wrestle again. We had the sh- all the Short brothers from Minnesota. Um, Willie Short, he was third or fourth in the NCAAs. His brother Chris was uh, third in the NCAAs. Uh, Marty Morgan was an NCAA champ and coached there uh, after – um, yeah, uh, Billy Pierce, he was an All-American, a couple-time All-American. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody remembers back that far. <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of a nerd. I remember some of that stuff. Like, I don't know yeah. how I knew Jack Kuvo, but, um, but I did. Because yeah. he was an 18-pounder, right? Yeah, yeah, he was a stud. Yeah. yeah. And the story goes, Keith Nix, you know, he was a true freshman wrestling the senior, and he lost 8-5, to five, I think. I think wow. it was eight to five, something like that. It was close, and he got off the mat, and the coaches said to him, "You know, they they were surprised that 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 he was you know beating guys the way he was coming in as a freshman. He just kept beating guys, and he came off the mat, and Jay used to tell us he said, uh, you know, the coaches said to him, man, that's that's fantastic. You know, great season, second in the NCAA, and he just looked at him, he was like, I didn't come here to take second. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's the mentality of a stud right there. Yeah, you know, I I was thinking about that last night. I was trying to remember that guy's name because. I think we met at the U.S. Open. Was that it? Me and you? Yeah. Uh, the World Championships in Las Vegas. Okay. That's where it was? Okay. Yeah. And I remember, yeah, and, and uh, I remember sitting next to you and I was like, shoot, this guy knows more than me about <laughs> these guys that are wrestling. And, and then we had a great conversation. We were hitting off. And then and then I asked you, uh, what, do you what do you do for a living? You said a comedian. And I was kind of like, what? Like a, like a comedian comedian? <laughs> You're like, yeah. And that's when we kind of got things going. You came out and, and uh, did the did the, uh, the fundraiser for us and stuff, yeah. Because you told me that you wrestled Kerry Colat, and I remember asking, was he the best guy you wrestled? And you were like, well, actually, there was a guy named Keith Nix that ended up, that ended up not, you know, he got hurt or whatever. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, you know, Ker- <laughs> I always tell people, like, my claim of fame, I lost to a lot of really good guys, you know, Kevin Cross and Colat and Steiner and all these guys. Uh some of those guys I didn't have, I didn't get the chance to wrestle them very long. But uh, Keith Nix, I, I wrestled him, you know, through practices and uh, a lot of workouts. And um, he is, he is, 
I th- I can't think of anybody else that I've wrestled or uh, practiced with that was better than that kid. Just I, you know, I don't even know what it was about him. You know, he wasn't he wasn't super tough. You know, you watch Cole and he's grinding, and 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 uh, this kid was just so slick and so good, and he never got to really reach his potential. Um, like I said, he was second as a true freshman, and the following year. Uh, he was, he didn't wrestle the first half of the season. He was suspended from the team and he, and he came back the second half and he was in the Big Ten finals. Uh, somebody who we had, he, he had beaten really bad before from Northwestern and he, uh, he tore his ACL. Oh. And, um, and he just never, never returned after that. And that kid that he had beaten before, that kid that he was beating in that match, he ended up winning the NCAAs that year at 118. Oh, wow. He would have been a multiple time NCAA champ, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, he was he, he's the best I've ever wrestled, I, I think. Yeah, yeah, wrestling is full of stories like that, and I love hearing them. Like, you know, like there, there's there's this guy that they're always talking about. I, I talk to Arc City, Kansas, all the time. I try to, and they're always talking about this guy, Eddie Boyer. And I, I bring up all these studs, and they're like, Yeah, Eddie Boyer was actually the guy that you know. I guess he beat John Smith, and, you know, he's just one of those guys that people don't know, but I'm like, that guy was, you know, something special. What do you remember about that match with Colette? Um, <laughs> funny story. So he he came out to, uh, I had him come out and do a clinic for us, do a camp, do, do part of my summer camp that I do. I always have, like, a big headliner, and he was phenomenal. He was, he was a, he's one of the best clinicians that I've ever had. And, uh, after the, after the, the camp, uh, it was him. It was Mark Perry who was at the camp. Uh, Paul Bradley, who wrestled the All American for Iowa, me and a couple other of our coaches, uh, from, from Poway High School. And the, and the coaches here, they always, they think it's funny to bring up Perry Cola because they know that I got pinned by him. Well, uh, he, he, he choked me out in the match. Not, not that I would have beaten him or anything, but he choked me out and, 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 and pinned me. And, uh, so at this, uh, at this, we had a get, little get together with those coaches after, and we were talking about, you know, wrestling and, and I don't want to bring any of that stuff up. I don't want to, you know, and one of my coaches thought he was funny and he's like, yeah, tell us about, uh, tell us about the, the big tens. Your, your, he was at Penn state that year. It was his freshman year. It was my senior year. Tell us about the big tens your freshman year. He's like, oh, well, you know, uh, got, got a couple pins and then, you know, this happened, this happened, and and, uh, and the guy kept egging him on to find out about the first match. You know, I wrestled him first, and finally was like, yeah, that guy, yeah, I, I pinned him, you know, and uh, and I was like, well, that was me. And he was like, oh, that was you? <laughs> and he kind of kind of giggles and, and, and uh, goes on to the next guy, you know, so. Yeah. Um, strong, super strong, just uh, as you'd imagine, you know, very tough to score on. Um and, uh, you know, I use him as an example a lot. You know, I follow a lot of the technique that he does. And, and uh, he, there are a lot of guys out there that you watch wrestle and they can do things that kids can't do. So as a high school coach, to be able to look at Kerry Kolak, um, you know, he had some things like his, his, his rubber knee and things like that. But for the most part, his, his position is so solid. And for young kids, you know, I always talk about, I talk to dads, they, 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 they ask me, what can I work on with my son? What, what can I show him? Well, how about position? Do just work on, on, on great position and stance and motion and keeping your chest by your, by your thigh when you're in that stance at all the time. Keeping a hand on the mat when you guys are apart. Those little things. Um, on bottom, you know, we do a rock drill with kids where the, the guys try to pull them out of position. Just pull them out of position from bottom. And they're trying to stay solid down there. Those things, uh, I feel like a guy like Kerry Colott, um, he exudes those things. He, 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 he does those things perfectly, you know. Uh, his technique is great, too, but his position is so good. It's so tough for people to score on. Yeah. Um, and, and when you watch him wrestle, that's true. And he, So he's a great model to watch for kids growing up, you know. You get some guys like um, uh, Yanni. Uh, who's a great wrestler. I love watching him, but he does some things that, that, that you, you can't, you know, 1% of 1% can do it growing up, kids growing up. So yeah. to find those guys that, that 
uh, the rest of the 99% of the, the kids can do and, and, and watch. Because everything now, we talk as coaches, everything is a highlight film for wrestling like it is for football and these other things, right? So what are the highlights of? They're, they're normally not, you know, a guy keeping good position and walking with his head when the guy comes and shoots, right? It's, it's uh, you know, um, passing the legs and, and, and nothing against those things, but uh, it's big, high amplitude throws, and um, which are awesome. But so kids want to emulate that. Kids want to watch those things. So it's these guys like Yanni and some of those guys that are, that are doing really cool stuff, um, whereas most of the kids I feel – they need just just basic wrestling, basic uh, wrestling. I tell my coaches, my kids club coaches all the time. We talk about it, and I say wrestling is easy. Wrestling is simple. You know, it's it's just teaching basic basic stuff. Don't do too much. If a kid can stay in a stance for six minutes and block with his head and not let a guy in, that that dude that other guy's gonna have a really tough time scoring. Yeah, you know, and and that's gonna raise your level of your percentage of wins also. So. Uh, yeah, as far as guys like that, Kerry Colot, I love watching him and, and just the way that he wrestles, he, he teaches now, you know, and he, great thing is he's at the Naval Academy right now. We have, we have three power wrestlers there wrestling, so they're loving it over there at, at the Naval Academy. Yeah, I remember, uh, I remember you telling me about wrestling Colat and, uh, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys went into the second period and it was zero to zero, right? Zero zero, yes. And I remember, I, I, you know, you're telling me the story, and after you told me the story, I go, yeah, but have you ever thought about the fact that you wrestled Kerry Colat for three minutes, and he didn't take you down? I was like, to me, that's awesome. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> no, because I was probably probably running from him and stalling. <laughs> I don't think I was trying to score either. Um, and it ended in the second period, so. <laughs> yeah. Did he choke you out with that front headlock he had? Yeah, so if I remember correctly, uh, if I remember correctly, I shot on him, and he got a front headlock on me, and uh, I started coming up. I was going to come up from it and and try to, uh, while he had the front headlock, I was thinking uh, high crotch, and, uh, and I started coming up, and I remember thinking to myself, this is getting tight. This is getting really tight. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Uh, I got pinned and, and, and kind of got up. I was still ready to wrestle, and the the referee was kind of like, you're done, son. You're, yeah. It's over. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Went up in the stands and asked what happened. He got pinned. So okay. so you have a fair amount of guys that make that jump to uh, not just college but Division One. Uh, what do you what do you tell them to, like, um, what's it take to transition from being a good high school wrestler to a, a successful college wrestler? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, at, at the Division One wrestle, wrestling level, it it takes you know it takes more than hard work, right? To be to be successful as far as the, as the wins and, and losses go, um, it takes some of that you know that freak athleticism too, like you're talking about. Um, it takes really good coaches at that level as well. And what I mean by that is not just the guys that know. Um, no technique um, and can spit that out. It also takes coaches to know what makes you tick to motivate you. Um, it takes uh, coaches or uh, other people um, to really get in your head. And, and, you know, I wish I had some of the things that, that I have now. We, we just hired, um, I hired this year uh, wrestling mindset to come into our program and, and work with our kids um, on their mindset as well. It takes great coaches to do that too. Um, I was a guy that, that used to get nervous before every match, no matter who I was wrestling. And nobody really um, explained to me like how to get over that. And I'll never forget, I had a coach, I had an assistant coach at Minnesota, and I tell, tell my guys, I, I remember warming up for a tournament and him telling me, uh, what, what's the matter? And, and I said, I'm I said, I'm nervous. And he looked at me like I was crazy. He said, what are you nervous for? And I was like, I was like, you never got nervous before your matches. And this was a high level wrestling. He goes, no. And, and he's like, just, just go out there and let it fly. You know, whatever happens, happens. And to me, that was the most bizarre thing because nobody ever taught me, you know, now what I'm learning as a coach, I've learned that, you know, I tell my kids, 
when I grew up, and this is nobody's fault but my own, uh, the way that I thought, there was one person. It was John Myers, the wrestler, and John Myers, the person outside of wrestling. It was all connected. And so if I lost, I wasn't a good person. I let my, I let my dad down. I let my family down. I let my teammates down. I let my coach down. I let all, my community, I let all these people down. And so it bothered me psychologically too. So then I have the weight of all that on me when I'm wrestling. Whereas, you know, then I started, when I got out, I started hearing all these really good wrestlers talking about, well, wrestling doesn't define me. It has nothing to do with this other person that I am. And I didn't grow up that way. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and so now, you know, I'm giving my guys that training and kids at the division one level, they, they need, their coaches need to be on that same page to kind of free them up free their mind up so that they're not worried about what their parents are thinking or what their coach is going to think if they lose. Um, and then just, you know, and then something simple as, Hey, just go out and wrestle or just go out and score points. Because if you told me that in high school or college, I would probably say, you know what? Shut up. That's not what it's about. I got to win this match, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. or go have fun. I used to say, you know, I'd be like, Oh, good one. Go have fun. Good one. Yeah. But now the things that I've learned as a coach and through, you know, we have this, this company that we brought in, Mindset, Wrestling Mindset, we're doing training on a weekly basis on these things. So our kids are hearing it over and over again. And not only are they hearing go have fun, they're learning how to do it. Yeah. They're learning how to practice it in practice, how to practice it in warm-ups and those things. Um, so if, if, if a kid goes into Division One with all of that, um, they're going to be successful. And then, and then it's, you know, what is successful? Um, I never placed in the NCAAs, but I consider myself successful in college because I went through that program for five years and I came out of it with all the knowledge to help other people. So then you have to kind of rate your success, you know? Um, and, uh, I think we do a good job preparing the kids here as far as the work ethic. Um, and now we're trying to, we're hitting that mindset part of it too. Um, so I think they're, they're, they're pretty well prepared for that part of it. I think a lot of kids who are kind of a singleton at some schools, you get these great wrestlers that, that go to their, you know, they have their one, they're their one guy on, on, on their high school team. It might be more difficult when sometimes it might be a shock when they get to, uh, these bigger programs. Like I explained for me, it was kind of a shock when I went there and I was like, wait a second, I'm not beating everybody here. Yeah. Um, so it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to be successful. And even then, you know, you're talking about, again, that funnel is getting whittled down to this, this small area of the best of the best now, you know, and, and th th then I guess you have, you have to, if, if we're talking about wins and losses being successful, then you have to have a, a little bit of luck too, right? You have to make sure the injuries are, are, are coming around. Cause how many kids have you heard? Like I just explained to you, I can name, you know, five or six kids that you've never heard of that should have been NCAA champs and, and, and they were injured. Nobody even knows them, you know, that wrestled with me in Minnesota. Um, so it, it takes a lot. And, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if other sports are like that. I assume they are at the division one level, but I know wrestling it's, uh, and that's why we appreciate it so much, right? If we go to the, the NCAA tournament and you watch these warriors for, for three days, go at it and come out of there as an all American. That is, yeah, that is incredible. You know, that is, that is the pinnacle in the Olympics and things like that. You know, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. And there are different levels too, you know, like you'll get some guy that's a stud in division one and then, you know, they might be in the top five or six or 10 and, and on the senior level, you know, it's just such a, do you think that's why people get tired in matches is because of the mental thing? Because obviously you work harder in practice than you do in a match and you can get through that whole thing without dying. But then sometimes in a wrestling match, like I remember sometimes just, I don't know if it was mental or what, but I wouldn't get tired at all in some matches. And then other matches, like in my state finals yeah. match, my state finals match, I thought I was going to die. You know? Yeah. It's the last match yeah. of the year. I should have been... How could that be in six minutes, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. after you've been wrestling all year, you know? Yeah, it, 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 it can be different for different kids, but we going through this program that we're going through now, we talk about, we talk about our warmups. We talk about, we did a lesson the other day. Um, it's like taking classes with, with this guy, Mindset Mike. And, and we talked about, think about your top performances that you've had in the last year. 
and your worst performance performances and talk about, you know, think about your fatigue that you got maybe in, the, in one of those matches. Okay, let's go back and let's talk about your warm up. Let's talk about your level of excitement for the, you know, maybe you need to change the way that you warm up. Maybe you need to change the music that's getting you so fired up emotionally. Um, maybe you need to come down a little bit. Maybe you need to bring it up a little bit. Um, and those are things we never did, right? We never did that in high school. We never talked. It was just, it was just like, get tough. You're, you better be in shape. You know, it was wrestle smart. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. What does it mean? Get tough. What is, what does that mean? And I've done it myself. You know, how do we get tough? So you have to go back and you have to train how to be tough. So I tell my wrestlers, uh, we ran this, this hill called North Crest the other day. It's an incredible hill that we ran and we did, we did four or five of those. And I tell the kids before we go out, Here's what we're doing. This is a chance to get tougher right now. I'm putting you on the clock right now. You can't get away from this, okay? You can't hide in the corner and pretend like you're wrestling hard. You can't get on top of a guy and try to ride him so you can rest. I'm going to time you. We're going to know. This is a chance for you to get tougher right now. Embrace this, you know? Um, whereas I don't know that I had a lot of that. Um, Jay Robinson did a really good job of talking. He talked a lot about coming from that Iowa mentality fear of fatigue, right? And he would just tell us, he would say his famous line was, you're going to get tired. Embrace that right now. You're supposed to get tired. Yeah. So let yourself get there on a daily basis. And then understand that feeling. Understand that feeling of tiredness. And love that. Love that tiredness. And then learn how to perform when you're tired. Because you've heard it before. If I'm this tired and I'm in good shape, that other dude's tired too. Yeah. If you can do the mental training to tell yourself, I've been here before, I can perform when I'm tired, I can hold position, I can go score when I'm tired because I've done that. Whereas for me anyway, it was panic mode. As soon as I started getting tired, I'm like, oh shoot, here it comes. Yeah. You know, I'm in trouble now. And now, now, like we talked about, those other things are entering your head, you know, and, and you can't wrestle like that. So yeah. it, it has to be training all the time, constant training. Yeah, I, I remember thinking, there's no way this guy's as tired as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's you know? true. You, you don't think they are, but they are. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's why you see little things. You know, we used to train it just like Iowa wrestled, running back to the middle. Psychological. Get back to the middle before he does. And I even watch, I watch sometimes, I watch these other guys. You can see these guys, the other guys that are coming back to the center slow. You can see them start to kind of think like, man, this guy's ready to go again. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And that's why we do things, you know, you hear Iowa wrestlers and we do it in our room where, where if you're wrestling somebody better than you and you're going a half hour, 45 minute go, that's all. If you get taken down, you get right up, right back in his face. He takes you down again. You, by the end of that match, that 30 minute go, you might be getting him. You might get, your goal might be getting so tired that now I'm getting in on him and scoring on him. Yeah. And that's psychological, you know, instead of giving in and saying, ah, this guy's going to kick my butt for a half an hour. Yeah, you, tired. you touched on that music thing. I, I remember re getting all fired up one time my junior year, listening to music. It was like Metallica, and I just wanted to kill this guy. Yeah. And then as soon as I took my headphones off, all of a sudden, it was weird. Like, all of a sudden, I just got exhausted within no time. Um, and I ended up losing that match. And after that, I never listened to music again before a match because I was like, that's yeah. that's like fake that's fake fired up, you know, yeah. because you're not going to yeah. have that music in your ears when you get on the mat. Yes. You know, and that's good that you assessed it and figure it out. A lot of kids don't figure that out. They'll go into the match and say, oh, I just did crappy because of something else. You know, I'm not good enough. Instead of thinking to themselves and assessing and saying, what went wrong? Why was I so tired? You know? Yeah. And, uh, and again, I, you know, I've, I've given it to it. You, you have to train that mental mindset constantly you have to train it constantly and if and, and one thing that i'm not afraid of you know we have we have our own uh strength and conditioning coach we hired a guy he's full-time strength and conditioning coach um we have we have something for er everybody uh we have now i hired this mindset guy i can i can put the kids through and i can tell them these things but if you don't know how to do it don't be afraid as a coach go hire somebody and that's what i did i'm gonna hire an expert I wrestled a lot of Greco-Roman when I was younger. I, I went overseas and wrestled while I was in college. But, and I could teach it. I could teach Greco-Roman right now, and I do a little bit. 
But I want my kids to be at the world level. We sent a kid this year to, to the, on the world team for, for Greco Roman. But what I did was I didn't say, A, what a lot of coaches do. We're not going to do Greco Roman because you don't need that. We're going to focus on folk style because they don't know how to teach it. Um, or B, try to teach it myself, all of it myself and just teaching them basics. I went out and hired a guy. So right now we have a guy that was third in the world championships from Belarus. They just moved to Poway. I have his two sons are here now going to Poway. He's my Greco Roman coach now. Nice. I'm not going to pretend like I know Greco Roman like the highest level guys. I can watch it and I can teach it. I'm going to get the best guy in. And that's what I would implore coaches if you can, if you can hire somebody to do the freestyle, hire somebody to do the Greco or ask somebody to come in. Hey, can you show, can you come in and show this? Um, I think our egos and our pride get in the way too much. And even for the mindset thing, myself, I just said, ah, I can teach that stuff. I can, I can tell, I, I, I'm a coach. I know how to tell these guys to be tough, you know, and how to, how to warm up and all these things. But the things that I'm learning are amazing. And this guy's an expert that's doing it. So if you want the best for your kids, get the best. And I'm not saying you have to spend all kinds of money, you know, people yeah. around say they call me, you know, ask me what, you know, I'll help you. Um, yeah. But reach out to people. As, as coaches, we have to do that. I see too many coaches, at least around here, um, not coaching or, or telling their kids, you know, we're not going to wrestle freestyle Greco. You don't, you don't need that. When in reality, they know, and, and these are the guys that are, you know, save, save Olympic wrestling. Well, teach your kids freestyle. Get them somewhere <laughs> where they can learn it. Yeah, yeah. What, what is the hardest part about coaching for you? Oh, man. Um... If you could point to one thing. There, yeah, you can imagine our, our program is so big with the kids wrestling. We probably have about 200, 250 kids in our whole program um, wrestling all year long. Um, the hardest part for me, I, I, I'd say two things. My organization, which, which comes down to probably my willing to delegate things. Um, I, I, I've been told I, I, I want everything done correctly, and maybe that's not the right way to do it. Um, it's correct in my mind, but I have, you know, sometimes I have to let things go and uh, and take it off my plate so I can do other things. So probably delegating the way that I should. Um, and then the other part of it is is the fundraising. Uh, I have I have these these aspirations and these dreams. Um, you know, my president, when he came in, he was a former wrestler for me. He was second in our state, and he became he became a famous jockey. I don't know if you met him, Mick Ruiz. Um, he's the guy that owns the scaffolding uh, company that put together that beautiful dome. Okay. Um, when he came, when I became the head coach, he came in at the same time. I brought him in. I said, hey, I need you to be my president. And I gave him this list. I kind of went like this to him. I said, hey, I've got these 20 things. This is my dream list. Don't laugh at me, okay? I'm going to show you this, and... And just, I want to show this to you. I don't want to show anybody else. And he looked at it. And one of them at the time was to become a, a, an Olympic regional training center, to become the first high school that is an Olympic regional training center in the United States. That, wow. that had been a dream for me. And uh, previously, when I came up with the idea, people were like, ah, that, how are you going to do that? You know, you're not even, you don't even have guys coming in or anything like that. Well, he looked at everything and he said, we can do all this. And, and I'll, I'll tell you how to do it, you know, how, on a business standpoint, but we have to raise the money. Yeah. So I have these dreams, you know, I, I, I want to make wrestling free for every kid, all 200 of our kids. I want, it to be, I want them to be able to go to Fargo for free. I want little kids, five, six, seven, eight, that's how you hook them is tell their parents, hey, we're having free wrestling for five months. Bring your kids in. Um, they go to a tournament free, every kid. It's going to take some money, right? That's going to take a lot of money. So the fundraising for me is is, is difficult. Um, getting the word out, getting the word out to people like this is a good thing and these are the things we can do. And then it being then it being wrestling, you know, to just go to somebody uh, a, a huge business and say this is a great thing and it's wrestling and they don't have an idea of what wrestling can do or what it is. It's very difficult to raise money like that. Whereas, yeah. you know. 
75% of the people in the United States have probably played football at one point or another or been to football games. You know, what's the percentage that have been to a wrestling match? Not, not as much. So if somebody approaches them and say, hey, our football program is doing great things, you know, can you help us sponsor us? They, I don't know. They might be apt to do that. Yeah. Um, so raising the money to do all the things that we want to do. And, and, and then I guess it's very difficult for me to, to see how high our ceiling can go with, you say we have these, you know, you know, we have this great community. I have these great administrators. We have this beautiful building, this $2 million building that somebody donated to us um, to have all these things and then see in my mind where we could go with this program to help kids at every level and not then not having enough money to do it. That kind of stinks, you know, Yeah. but it makes me work harder. Yeah, I don't know if that answered the question. Oh, ab- absolutely. On the flip side, what's the uh, what's the best thing for you about coaching? What's the most rewarding? Oh, so you know, there, there's a lot of things. Of course, it, it, it's the most rewarding thing in the world, uh, I think. And um, just being able to see, especially with our program, <laughs> I, seeing where how these kids develop. Uh, so the highest level kids, like we talked about, the highest level kids. It's awesome to see, you know, I have a kid, uh, Andre Gonzalez at Ohio State right now. I went out and visited him uh, during the summer and saw him working out. And, and just to see him progressing as a, as a man, um, seeing him around, you know, Tom Ryan and, and, and these wonderful kids on his team and, and being at that college, just, just seeing him progress is amazing. Seeing kids 15 years down the line that maybe won a varsity A kid and are becoming doctors now and, and, and lawyers and things like that. Um, Seeing them progress, and and uh, funny story today, I wanted to talk to the kids about today about hey this becoming the best at what you do is a twenty four hour a day three hundred sixty five you know a year thing at Poway Wrestling. You know if we're trying to win the world championships, I always say, say tell the kids we're trying to win world championships and Olympic championships. If we're trying to do that. Then every day, whether you're not you're wrestling or not, your diet has to be on point. Your thinking has to be on point. All these things have to be on point. And uh, and after I gave that speech, the kids started warming up. And this kid came over to me that's in our PE class. And he's a junior. And he, he saw us running on the track one day. and was like, I want to do that. Is it hard work? And I said, yeah. We said, yeah. He said, I want to I want to join the wrestling team. He said, all right, come on out. So this kid's been with us for like two weeks. And he came up to me and goes, um, Coach, can you just tell me how what you expect of me? After I gave that speech, and I go, I go, oh my gosh, you know, I'm talking about winning world championships. And I said, I said, hey man, you no, he's a senior. He's actually a senior. He just came out, so we can't even. I was going to tell him like, hey, you're going to be the JV County champ this year. I couldn't even tell him that. I said, all right, you're a senior. You're going to be on varsity B this year, and and you're going to wrestle matches. And I want you to get them, be the best that you can be at varsity B. So that's going to take. He said, well, I have a job. And I said, okay, just like our football players. You know, once on Saturdays, if you don't have a job on Saturday morning and we're practicing, I want you there for Saturday practice. If you have a job Monday after school when we're practicing wrestling, then you can't be there on Monday. But Tuesday during class, we practice it. So I want you there Tuesday. Just be the best that you can all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just seeing these kids progress and, and being able to use wrestling as a vehicle to teach these lessons. And we always say, like, winning is awesome. And we, we do a lot of winning. Um but to see these kids just move on to the next stage in their life and whatever that stage is using wrestling, whether it's a scholarship to, we have a kid going to Wisconsin next year, whether it's that scholarship to go to Wisconsin or it's a kid. We have a kid who um, really good wrestler for us last year is not wrestling in college, but he's going to the university of Utah. He's going into the nursing program, which is really um, prestigious and, uh, and using those lessons of hard work in the classroom, you know, he's in, he's in school right now saying that this is easy. You know, this, yeah. this schoolwork thing is easy without wrestling. Now, now I have all this free time to do my classwork. Um, just seeing that progress, that that's the most rewarding. Yeah, Coach, speaking of Coach Ryan, he said something to me one time that really, or not to me necessarily, but um, I, I saw him in an interview talking about it, um, about being a champion and just being the best version of yourself. Yes. And, and that really resonated with me. I'm like, well, anybody can do that. You know, yeah. I mean, it takes yeah. work, but, it, you know, you don't have to be a world champion or a state champion or a national champion, but you can be the best version of yourself 
if you put, you, you can know, control that. Yeah. That's something you can control. It's like they always say, like, effort, right? The effort and attitude. You can control those things. Give me that. Give me the best and give me positive thinking all the time. Yeah. You can control all those things for sure. And, yeah, Tom Ryan, he, he, he has so many uh, – nuggets and just words of wisdom i can listen to that guy all day yeah and uh Be that's the- that's the reason why my guy is there i actually saw him out my kid was double fargo champ and everything but uh i called tom ryan up and i said hey coach i've got a guy that i i think you'll really like and and to be honest i want him around you you know he's such a good dude yeah. yeah. Be the landlord of your own mind and all that stuff. You yes, know? yes. Yes. He's got all yeah. kinds of stuff like that. Um, I know you got to go. Did you have him on? I did have him on. It was, I, ha- I listened to that. I think I texted you. Yeah. Yeah. That was fantastic. It was, was one of, fantastic. it was one of my favorite ones. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I know you got to go, but I wanted to ask you this real quick. Um, tell us why you love being a, a dad to girls so much. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this, this this story, my assistant coach laughs all the time. He tells a story when when I was uh, when we were getting ready to have our our first kid. I had the baby. I don't know if I told you the story. Yeah, the baby room. Um, I had it all set up, and, and I convinced my wife, although she didn't like it, <laughs> uh, it was going to be these big heads of famous <laughs> Russian wrestlers. <laughs> so it was going to be like. Fedzaev and Karelin, you know, all these scary dudes, you yeah. know, looking down at, at my, my baby. I was like, I'm going to create this atmosphere, this nest in there, and that's what he's going to look at first, and then we're going to watch the films, and <clears throat> um, I just, I, I, I think to myself now, and maybe I would have done a better job of it, but I convinced myself that I probably, I maybe would not have separated you know, Johnny Jr., uh, the wrestler and the real person, and may have felt pressure myself to um, to make sure that, that he shored up as a wrestler. And um, when I had my first daughter, uh, I was amazed at the person it made me. So it made me uh, attack things on, on a different angle. Instead, you know, when I'm as a wrestling coach, my wife always says I have this wrestling voice and I'm, you know, sometimes I have to, you know, get into it with kids and and really, you know, with my daughters that never worked. Uh, They would laugh at me when, when I, when I would give them that wrestling voice or that coaching voice and I had to kind of use my head a little bit, you know, and, 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 and get them to do the things that they were supposed to a different way. And on top of that, as they got into their, their, they're high, very high level dancers. Um, as they got into dance, the greatest thing for me was to be able to enjoy, uh, dance without trying to be a coach. And I know that coach, you know, father, son coaching, uh, tandems, it's worked out for a lot of people, but, um, to be able to me do the things as a parent for dance, like, like getting them to the right coach, um, and then just watch as a parent was amazing, and it still is. And and uh, it's it's a freedom. It's really a freedom because I always tell people uh, the first time I've been back to the NCAs was the last one they had when it was in Pittsburgh. Okay, I've never really been able to sit in the stands except for like the World Championships. A couple times I've been able to sit in the stands and be a fan of wrestling. So it's very high stress when I'm watching wrestling and when I'm uh, when we're competing in wrestling to be able to have my daughters do something where I can just kind of sit there and it it can't be stressful but not coach them has been amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's been incredible. Yeah, it's it's a freedom. It, it's been a freedom for me. And yeah. on the other side of it, I've never been involved in any of the arts before. Um, I've just been I I grew up on wrestling. That's it. You know, this, this struggle is, and to listen to my daughters talk about, you know, they do competition sometimes. It's like, don't, don't you want to beat that girl? Do you want to beat her in the competition? <laughs> and why are you cheering for them? Why, why are you happy for her? And, and my daughter's like, no, I think that's awesome that they won. You know, that's, that's fantastic. She's worked so hard and, you know, see that side of the artistic level of it, um, has been amazing for me and, and, and kind of balances me and, and calms me a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, 
Dude, so, all, all of my friends are like that. Yeah, a lot of my friends have daughters, and they're like, "Dude, you gotta have a daughter." It's it's uh, it's you can't explain it until you have one. Yeah. And it's the same thing with having a boy. As far as like you know, there's all these things that you hear people say when they have a kid before you have one, and then you have one, and all those cliches start to make sense to you. Yes. You know. Yes, hundred so, percent. Yeah. And, and boys, you know, having a boy. I'm sure if I if I had a boy, I would have been right now. I'd be talking about. Oh, it was an amazing trip. You know, the journey that I had with my son in wrestling was just incredible. You know, that I couldn't have had. Well, you can't have it with girls if they wrestled. But, um, yeah, it, it, I'm sure it would have been different. I'd probably try to talk myself into that and say. But but the artistic side of it, for me, having them do dance and having me know nothing about dance has been awesome. Yeah. And we, we always say, like, call your coach. Let's call up your coach right now. And we're going to ask them if you're supposed to or not. You know, whereas... If it's wrestling, like I know what you're supposed to do, and you're gonna do it. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I wish I had more time to talk to you because I, I would love to talk to you about our world team. How freaking great is the USA wrestling right now? Oh, it's incredible! It, it's incredible, and uh, the the I, mean, I know people talk about this all the time, but to be you know, kids don't know how good they have right now. To be able to watch live and watch. You know, have have watch parties with your friends. You know, I know our team, all the kids get together at somebody's house and they watch these these events. Um, is Number one, it's the greatest wrestling we've had in the United States right now. And number two, it's live and thrown at you. It's so accessible right now, that part of it. It's incredible. And, uh, yeah, that world team, they're going to be fun to watch. It's going to be so much fun to watch, for sure. I get so annoyed with people that complain about, like, flow if, like, something doesn't go right. I'm like, do you understand when we were kids, I had to wait a month for USA Wrestler to even see how we even did at the World Championships, and now you I just... Never understand, I never understand the same thing. I tell my coaches, like, how are these people complaining about flow wrestling? And yeah. may- maybe because they're the only show in town, but... Holy smoke, man! I, I, I don't want to tell my principal this, but I'm on I'm on full wrestling <laughs> twenty four hours a day. I'm like, I got it on the on the side, you know, window. That thing is open and looking for new stuff and tracking the, you know, who's transferring. And I mean, it's yeah. it's incredible. Like you said, I mean, I can remember. I tell the kids on my team <clears throat> when the USA Wrestling Magazine or Amateur Wrestling News used to come, I'd be in school. That would be like my full wrestling. I'd be looking at that thing in class and. Um, yeah, what a, what an incredible, uh, time to live in for wrestling and it's yeah. just going to get better. And, yeah. uh, yeah. And, and I, and I feel like the, maybe I just thought of this, but maybe being in the limelight, I don't know how they were before, but being in the limelight, uh, these wrestlers have become kind of rock stars and I feel like they are such good mentors for our young athletes to be able to look at, you know, um, even, you know, take Gable Stevenson for, for example. Um, a lot of people thought of him as like the villain of college wrestling sometimes, you know, uh, but look at him, look at the way that he speaks. And he came on, he, he's come to our program a couple of times. Our president had him out and uh, he's hung out with our team and he has been the best spokesperson to kids um, uh, Roman Bravo Young, the same thing. He came out on a Zoom during the pandemic and talked to our parents, and I was just like blown away at their professionalism. And, uh, you know, the NIL and those things that these guys are going through, they have to become that, you know. And, and, and I watched, uh, I'll never forget, I watched a match from like, it was Jordan Burroughs, like maybe his freshman or sophomore year, and Flo Wrestling interviewed him after. Go back and watch some of his earlier uh, talks that he that he gives, and the amount of professionalism and and the way that he talks now, because he knows that 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 kids are looking up to him, you know, and parents are listening, and 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 also you know endorsements and things like that. These guys are trying to gain. It makes them, I think, really good mentors for our kids, you know, yeah. um, which has helped a lot too to be able to say, hey, look at. Look at this guy. You hear what he was talking about? You know, work ethic and those things. Um, that's that part of flow wrestling has helped us a lot as well. Yeah, and speaking of Gable Stevenson, you know, like 
I grew up, you know, not being, you know, you don't be cocky and that kind of thing. But I tell you what, when he is in a high level match with some stud like Mason Paris and he goes and does that kind of stuff, I'm like, man, that guy's a freaking beast. You know, he's just like, you can't. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm working on this PowerPoint. He he actually developed. He was actually working for us for a little while for our president, and he developed this PowerPoint for us on power wrestling. And I'll send it to you. It, it, it has, I'm almost done with it, but it has uh, two slides on um, his opinion of uh, wrestling mindset. And it gives you that, you know, as a, as a, a regular wrestler, like you know, a normal wrestler, like we were, it gives you some insight on how these guys do it. Like you talk about like Mason Paris, you know, the, the second best guy, this dude's good. He's yeah. good, you know. But it gives you an insight into their mind, how they're thinking of, there is no doubt. There is zero doubt. I'm going to beat him, and I am going to beat him bad, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, um, I'll let you go, dude. I know you got stuff to do, but uh, is there anything you want to say before I let you get out of here? No, th- thanks Thanks for what, you know, what you're doing, and um, I really appreciate it. And uh, this is... This is kind of part of the giving back that, that I talked about, um, that exposure. So you have, you know all this, but I'm telling other people, you have exposed wrestling to a whole other group of comedians and people who listen to, 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 to comedy. Your, com- your comedy is, is off the hook, you know, so people know you because of that. Now when you throw a little bit of wrestling and how it affected you into that, you've affected another group of people and and maybe five or six people say like, Hey, let me check that out. Let me check what he was talking about. You know, let me see that. Let me go watch that. And that's what we have to do as a community. We have to start branching out and, and, and creating fans who have never wrestled before. Yeah. How we do it. I, I don't know. You're doing it. You know, we have to be as wrestlers. We have to be thinking about that all the time because that is the, that is the ultimate goal. To, yeah. to, to show people what a great sport it is, you know. Yeah, so, my my best friend Kurt is a comedian, and he is he he never really wrestled, but he's he's a total nerd about it. I mean, he he came to my house for the NCAs, and uh, he flew here just to watch it. And we sat on my couch for three days and watched NCAs. And he's got a computer and he's got a spreadsheet and knows the team score and updates it the whole time. I'm like, that's what we need. <laughs> that's what we need, and that's that reminds me of like Stephen Neal in, in his backyard. Uh, he had for he had an NCA watch party. He had uh, eight to eight to ten TVs going on at the same time. He had food for everybody. Everybody in his neighborhood was invited, so we had people there that were stopping by and watching this for the first time in a, in, a, in a wonderful like tailgating atmosphere. You know how many times do we do things like that? How many times do you do do people tailgate for things? How many times do people we do? Our coaches do a fantasy wrestling league for college wrestling. You know how many times we do that and draw people in and yeah, yeah, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, well, I knew I would enjoy uh, having you on the podcast. I'm sorry I haven't done it earlier. I don't know why I haven't, but uh, um, everything happens for a reason, and you do everything. You know, I ask God all the time to put the right people in my path, and I, I think you're one of those people that He put in my path. So, oh, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, buddy, I could talk to you all day, but yeah. I'll let you go. Um, all right, man. Say yeah. hi to the family. I will, buddy. You too. All right. Have a great day. Bye, bye. All right, everybody. John Myers. I love that dude. Um, you know, we, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I don't know if I'm going to ever move. In, into his area but um i would love for him to coach my boy someday he's a great guy and uh great for the sport of wrestling and uh you know i could i could talk to him all day when we when we i thought it was the u.s open for some reason but it was the world championships and uh that's the thing about wrestling too you know sometimes you just come across people that you could that you could just talk to for hours and he's one of those people so I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as i did make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh share this with people i would really appreciate it and I believe that's it. Always, always go to making it happen. M a c a n it happen dot com. Help out little Bo Macon and his family. And that's it. If you're uh, watching this and you have a young son or daughter and uh, you want to get him into something, they got a lot of energy. Get them into wrestling. It's the best sport in the world, at least in my opinion. And uh, it also happens to be true. So, <laughs> God bless all of you. Thanks so much for listening. And take care. Bye. 
do us both a favor and click on that subscribe button.